All right, just pick this thing up. Supposedly this thing is a 1993 CR125 with a 2001 CR125 engine in it. I have no idea if that's accurate or not. And supposedly the whole engine was rebuilt. And that looks to be accurate because I can see the gaskets in there. So I'm guessing it was rebuilt. I got this thing for $700 because the guy said it wouldn't shift out of third gear. So it shifts smoothly from first to third, but will not shift out of third gear. Also, it does not start now. The guy said he used to be able to get it to start, but now uh, he said you can kick it and kick it, and it won't start up. So he decided to sell it for $700. It was up for 1000 He came down to 700 on it. He was pretty firm at eight, but we got him down to seven after talking about a couple things. You can see tires are completely trashed on it. Zero tread left on the rear and the front. Pipe is just dangling in the wind here. What's going on with that? This bike is just beat. Plastics are all painted black. We'll have to strip those down. I think these are originally black, uh, but the tank is not. That's usually white. Plastics right there are white. These don't look too bad. Has a new seat cover on it. Enjoy MFG. So that looks good. Grips are trash. Um, front suspension is, is junk on it. It's super soft. Chain is completely rusted out and loose. It's super rusty. I mean, come on. That's horrible. Looks like it might be leaking a little oil from the drain bolt as well. You can see the side cover was painted black. Looked like it used to be red. It does have the original carburetor on it, which is good. And uh, looks like the coil wire was changed at one point. And it looks like there's like a, a weird subframe on it that was orange. So who knows what uh, is going on inside the engine here. But we will find out today. It's pretty clapped out here. You can see the frame there, 1993, right there. It does have a pro circuit pipe on it. So that might clean up a couple dents here and there. But she's rough, she's really rough. Does it have compression? Feels like it has decent compression. Brakes work, oh yeah. Brakes are working. Clutch pulling. Clutch is a little soft on it. There's a lot of slop in the clutch. Almost like a centimeter of slop there. Oh boy. Yeah, she's she's really rough. Well, that's just for fun. Kick it over and see if she fires up. That would be amazing if it would. The grips are all just peeling off my hand. They're really nasty. Alright, well, let's first check if there's coolant in it. If this thing does fire up, oh yeah, there's coolant. Wow, topped off. Would you look at that? That is funny. Alright. Let's see. Turn the gas on, see if it leaks out of here. Looking at the drain. Oh, it's right there, there's no hose on it. Not seeing anything leaking. Choke it. Does that choke not work? <laughs> choke I don't think works. It's stuck on. Never seen that before. <laughs> we'll have to work at that, but uh, choke is stuck completely on.
Well, she does not want to go. So let's get her in the garage and start working on it. Hopefully we can figure out this bike by the end of the day. Might have to tear apart the engine to figure out that third gear. We'll see. All right, we got this piece of junk in the garage. We're gonna try to not make it a piece of junk today. So I think first thing we're gonna do is try to get this thing running and then we'll deal with the third gear situations. I just wanna check and see if it does only go to third gear. So we're in neutral right now. There's first. Neutral. Second. Third. Oh yeah. Doesn't shift past third. It's really smooth up until third. That's really weird. But she is like stuck. It is not moving past third. There's like no play whatsoever. I mean, it's really smooth until third, so. I don't know what that could be. It doesn't feel like the drum. You know, with the drum, you'd have a little slop in there. And it'd be trying to go into the next gear. But that doesn't feel like that. It's just like completely missing. <laughs> Weird. Let's see what the air filter looks like. All right, who thinks there's an air filter in here? I'm betting on no. Two different size bolts, off to a good start. Right, that piece of plastic came off. Hey, would you look at that? There's an actual air filter in there. Wow. Hey, and it's even oiled. That is something. She's a little dirty in there. But hey, that's way better than what I was expecting. There's even the strap for the gas tank. Holy cow. Yeah, I don't know if that air filter was actually doing much. Look at that. It's just like, it's missing the cage. Of course it is, right? So it's just the air filter with no cage, so it's obviously not gonna do anything. So I don't forget about it. So this needs a cage. Which maybe I have one in the parts bin, we'll see. Looks like a pretty newish air filter. Nothing was getting through at least, so that's good. All right, it's pretty clean in there. Not horrible. All right, let's check the oil. See what that looks like, see if it's milky. And uh, we'll see what uh, color that oil is. I don't think there's a sight glass on it, so. Will there be any oil in this? Who thinks it's milky? There's a high probability of that. Let's see. No oil so far. Let's see if I can get further in there. Still nothing. You know, maybe there's not any oil in here. There we go. Hmm, not a whole lot in there. There we go, let's see. Oh, there we go. All right, doesn't look milky. We'll see when we drain it. But if it's not milky, we're off to a good start. I think that's a that's a problem. I think it's either a spark or fuel. I know the choke is. <laughs> oh, it looks like gas is squirting out of here already. Let's see. Let's see if the petcock works.
no water oil separation happening that I can see. No weird bubbles at the top that would indicate water in the gas, so that looks pretty decent. So it's getting gas. Huh. CDI's there, that's good. Coils here. Kill switch is hooked up. That looks all correct. It's a weird uh, coil wire for this coil. Looks like it might be aftermarket. This is Honda. Let's see, maybe it's the wrong coil. Honda CR125. R. Okay, so it looks like somebody put a new coil on there. Get this plug out of here. BR8EG. If this says spark, it's gotta be a compression problem. Almost has to be. This is getting too much fuel. Spark plug is wet with a lot of fuel, like a lot of fuel. So it might be flooding it out, having that choke left on, or stuck on I should say. Let's just see if she has spark here. Let's see if we have anything. Oh yeah. Looks like good spark. Very good spark. It might be fouled out too from running with the choke on all the time. So we'll try a new spark plug as well. A right, brand new plug. Let's just see what it looks like if we have spark or not. Spark plug was kind of sparking all over. It should be right at the tip there. Yeah, see like that. See how it's more controlled. So I think that might have been a problem. Let's try firing it up now. Get this new plug in. plug. All right, we're going to quick check and see if that plug's wet. I have a feeling we have a carb issue if that plug is wet. It might be flooding it out. Yeah. Plug is super wet. So, let's take a look at that choke on the carb. All right, this choke should go down. You can see it's not going down at all. Let's see what's going on. 
I'm guessing that plunger is stuck up. Um, yep. Yeah. See, that's how low it's supposed to go. So, let's see. The idle was up. Yeah, that idle was all the way up, that's why. Nut on there needs to be backed off. So this can actually go down. Like that. See if that does anything for us. So the idol was probably stuck open, or at least really high. Now, see now the choke's working. All right, cool. Let's just check what the air screw's at right here. So we're at, let's see here, one, two, oh two, it's pretty good. One, two. Now I'm just gonna clear out the cylinder. If this thing's flooded out, it just needs all that gas cleared out of it. Kick it over a couple times, get all the fumes out of there. What happens here? Sounds a little weird. Tons of fuel on the pipe. Oh cow. Look at it all dripping out of the pipe here. So this thing was flooding out big time. So we got to fire up though, that's awesome. Um, we're gonna take off that silencer and the whole pipe and then uh, just drain that thing out. But it did run. It was definitely the, uh, the choke being left on or stuck on. But yeah, it's just it's just gonna pour out of here. You can kind of tell it's like burping. It was a blub, 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 when it when it started up. So I know there's fuel in there. Not a whole lot. It must be in the actual pipe. Probably didn't make it all the way up to the silencer. Bolt right here, bolt right there. All 
All right, this pipe should pop off. You can hear fuel in it. Let's see how much is in here. Dump it out. So that was a lot of fuel in there. So that was the problem. She was just really, really flooded out. I'm guessing the guy tried to kick it over, kick it over, kick it over with the choke on and it just compiled, compiled um, until it just filled up that pipe Then obviously wouldn't start. So fixing that choke fixed the starting problem. All right, almost forgot to do a compression test here. So let's see what we're working with. For 125, you want to see above 150, typically. Let's see, where do we want to put this? Kick this over a couple times, see what we get. Pretty much ran the money there, 160, like 159. So, it's plenty of compression. That's awesome. All right, so the oil drain plug is right down there. You can see it's leaking a little bit. It's not cracked over there at all, so that's good. But um, we are going to drain the oil next. Check and see what that looks like. Check and see if there's any metal shavings. That'll kind of tell us what to do next. Um, the rod bearing seems fine, the crank seems fine, it's nice and smooth, piston seems fine, it's got plenty of compression, so I'm thinking, I'm hoping, the guy didn't put the gears back together wrong, which he definitely could have, um, I'm hoping it's just within the clutch side cover case here. So there's a shift drum with a star, it's called a shift star, so that shift drum could be getting stuck, or a pin could be dropped out of it or that shifting star could be stripped. So hopefully it's something within the clutch side so we don't have to tear down the brand new top end that the guy put in. That's kind of what I'm hoping. So let's change out that oil first, then we'll tackle this side and get this whole cover off. I don't know why that was so loose. I was able to tighten it like a ton. Seems weird, doesn't it? Oh, there's some oil in it. The drain plug seems really, really short, doesn't it? <laughs> what the heck? I don't see any milky oil. There's not a whole lot in there. But it's not milky. Huh. No metal shavings at all yet. Let's uh, pop this cap open, get some air going in there. So far the oil doesn't look bad. Alright, oil looked clean, no metal shavings at all. So let's drain the coolant out of here next. Let's get these hoses off next. Get 
It's easy today. Oh yeah. Sweet. Came off. That out of the way. Let that dangle down. I need bolts. That's nice. It would be really awesome if it was just something with the shift shaft or something easy. Now we have to get the power valve cover off too. Our valve cover coming off. Look at the power valves in there. It's crazy. Just shot. Everything in there. Pretty cool how that works. Look at that. That comes out when you. <laughs> That is a cool design. It can easily fail, but it's still kind of cool. <laughs> hmm. Something's holding that on. I don't know why that would not be coming off. It's like stuck on. Do that anyway. I broke the gasket. All right, it's coming. Need to apply some force. I think they used um, some sealer on there, some sort. So we have to disconnect the power valve. There's a little clip in there. And if we pull it down. There we go. There we go. All right, covers off. All right, looking in here. Clutch basket looks amazing. Power valves are looking good. Looks like new clutch springs too. Right 
Don't want to lose that. I'll take this out too. Clutch rod. Did a good job getting that down, holy cow. There we go. Washer. There are two washers in there? Oh yeah, two washers. Alright. This whole thing can come off. So this is the area we're focused on right here. So when you shift it, it shifts the shift drum right here with these little these little pieces of metal that go right here, they shift. It's kind of hard to see. So let's shift it and just see what it's doing. Oh, I don't even. Okay, I think I see what's what the problem is. See right there? Getting caught up on this piece of metal right here. See that? So this should be the other way around, I think. See now it's not getting caught. Now it's getting caught again, see right there? So that I think is in incorrectly. Half coming out here. There's a washer. Just see if we get this plate off of here. So it looks like he had it incorrectly. None of the pins were missing. None of those looked weird. Let's see if this bolt is loose. Sometimes the shift bolt can be loose. Loose before where you can't shift it. We're taking out that bolt. Will she come out? That is the question. There's a pin that has to line up on the back of it. Maybe that's gone.
Looks like it was lined up. Hmm. So this has to, this groove has to line up with the pin. And there you can see the pin right there. And sometimes if they're not lined up, they can cause problems. All right, so unfortunately, it's not going past, it's not going past third gear. So right now we're in neutral. Let's see, we're in neutral. I think we're in first gear right there. There's neutral, because you can hold this and it won't spin. And here's first, that's the first here. There's first, there's second, third, and see it won't shift past third, so. That is not good. Um, that means we have to split apart the cases. I'm guessing they put a gear in there wrong, um, either backwards or or it's missing a gear. So that is unfortunate. So the whole engine has to come out. We have to take off the top end and uh, get the bolts out of the frame here, get the swing arm bolt out, get this engine off, and then we can start digging into the bottom end. All right, we got the carburetor off the clutch cable off, everything is off this engine. Now we can get it out of the frame. So swing arm bolt has to come out. Oh boy, that's not good. Looks a little rusty in there. This might be rough. Oh yeah. All right, now we should be able to get this engine out of the frame. Little engine on the bench. Let's start tearing this thing down. what this top end looks like. Head has a couple gouges in it right there, but nothing on the surface here, so that looks really good. down. All the coolant's coming out too. Cylinder looks good. All right, piston was in the correct way. Can't tell what kind of piston it is. All right. Piston looks brand new, pretty much. Bearing looks new. Rod feels good. Quite a bit of side to side play, but no up and down at all. It's got hot rods in it. That's not good either. Hot rods, so they did. Uh, they did rebuild this thing. Look at that side to side play. I don't like that either. Seems excessive. No up and down though.
Nice, those look all really, really nice. Let's see if we can crank it off of here. There we go. Washer, gear, there we go. Looks good. That one. That thing can come out now. Look at that. Bolts. They're all new bolts, so. Somebody did a pretty good job rebuilding it. They just uh, never checked to see if it shifted, I guess. <laughs> all right, let's see what happens. Let's put these cases. All right, that's out. Bearings look good. They used OEM bearings, it looks like. Made in Japan. Let's see the shift drum. Looks good. Shift room looks really good. I don't see any scratching or imperfections on the shift room, so I don't think it's the shift room that's the problem. I'm guessing somebody put the gears in there on. It's gotta be it. I would think. Let's see how they were in there. All right, we got the transmission out here. Everything looks perfect. All the gears were in there perfectly. Nothing was out of place. All the forks were in there perfectly in the right order. So I'm thinking possibly that he maybe put the forks in the wrong grooves on the drum here, on the shift drum, possibly. That's pretty much all I could think of um, that could go wrong with this because all the gears are perfect. The uh, forks aren't bent or worn down. So I'm thinking he just put these in the wrong grooves. All right, check this out. We got the transmission back in. We're gonna try to go through all the gears here. We're actually in sixth right now. You can see when I spin it, this is moving right here. So that's 6th gear, 
strapped down in the fifth. There's fifth, still grabbing. Here's fourth. Perfect. Third. Second. Should be neutral right here, yep. See how it doesn't spin. And then first gear. There's first right there. Now it's spinning. So that is perfect. So it's going through the gears very smoothly. So I think the guy put the pin from the forks in the wrong groove on the drum. And that's why it wasn't shifting. And it was just getting stuck. But it shifts really smooth now. So we can put everything back together. We've got to get new gasket kit for it. We've got to get a chain for it. Um, I want to paint the subframe white. Um, what else do we have to get for this thing? New grips, new air filter cage, and this thing should run and drive. Also, I found out this is a 1993 engine. It is not a 2001 like the guy said. So, <laughs> I don't know where he got that from, but this is in fact a 1993. But uh, yeah, so the guy must have just rebuilt it wrong and uh, that happens and uh, all you can do is fix it and unfortunately we had to tear it all down to fix it which kind of sucked but here are all the parts laid out we can put it back together it wasn't that bad to tear down and we'll have a nice running driving bike so stay tuned for next video on this thing let me put it all back together get all the new parts for it i might get a new pipe for it as well or try to clean this one up but uh yeah it should be it should be driving and running perfectly once we get this thing back together. So stay tuned for next video guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. And until next time, we are out.